from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back to KPX 5 This Morning Time Now, 629. I'm Melissa Kane. Good morning, I'm Devin Feely. Big waves along the California coastline are creating a shortage of fresh Dungeness crab, which some consider to be a holiday staple. The waves have kept a lot of crab fishermen and their boats on land. The Aliota Leosa Fish Company in San Francisco says that supply is not keeping up with the demand. The shortage also means, you guessed it, higher prices per pound for customers. The phones are, have been ringing all day long, and we'd love to help them out. If we had the crabs, we would, we would help out everybody, we'd, but we can't. Even before the waves, the supply was short. The coast north of Sonoma County is closed to crab fishing because crabs there have been underweight. And high surf isn't the only problem. King tides are also causing flooding on the Highway 101 off-ramp from 101 in Mill Valley. Uh, the lower half of the Manzanita Park and Ride lot near 101 is closed this morning after King tides flooded the area. Caltrans says it will remain closed through Christmas. One person is dead after a multiple vehicle accident in San Bruno this morning. The California Highway Patrol says it happened about 3.30 this morning on northbound 101. It's blocking multiple lanes near the San Francisco airport, so anyone flying out of there for Christmas should allow for even more time to get to the airport. So far, there are no reports of other injuries. A South African guitarist has played all over the world, but one particular performance stands out. Check out why. This is Musa Manzini. He's strumming his guitar while surgeons remove a tumor from his brain. Now, he was kept awake during the six hour surgery so doctors could preserve the areas of his brain that he uses to play music. But once he's fully recovered, he says he does intend to take the stage again. And firefighters had to rescue a plumber at the San Francisco airport after a carbon dioxide tank began releasing toxic fumes and he passed out. Now, the plumber was one of two men working underground yesterday below an airport catering facility. According to a San Francisco airport spokesman, it seems fumes from a concrete cutting machine overwhelmed the men in a confined space. One of the men passed out, but the other was able to escape. Uh, one employee was unconscious and the other was able to make it out and call for help. Well, the man who fainted was taken to a hospital. Police say they have arrested a man accused of attacking a woman in Palo Alto. It happened Thursday night on Castilea Avenue. Police say that woman was walking when a man came up from behind and put his hand over her mouth. The suspect then pushed the victim into the bushes, and when the victim started to scream, the suspect punched her in the face. 28-year-old Marcelo Garcia Martinez is now in custody. He was booked into county jail on several charges. The victim suffered bruising and swelling to her face and shoulder. And there's a new push to curb dangerous driving and sideshows in the East Bay. The State Office of Traffic Safety just awarded a half million dollar grant to Oakland Police, the CHP and the Alameda County Sheriff's Department. Now, these funds are going to pay for a special traffic enforcement teams who will crack down on speeders, red light violations, drunk drivers and illegal sideshows. We know that there's a criminal element associated with some of the sideshow activity, some of the reckless driving. So when we do do enforcement, you know, oftentimes we do come across weapons, drugs. Everybody's had enough of this. And so it's time to send that zero tolerance message. And so we'll be out there. Now, this grant will pay for traffic enforcement teams to do 24 enforcement nights over the next year. Also in Alameda County, a new report has put a price tag on ending homelessness. To get everyone off the streets and into homes and shelters, the county would need to shell out more than $330 million a year. That would more than triple Alameda County's annual spending on programs related to homelessness. The report also suggests that tripling the number of subsidized housing units per year from 3,000 to 9,000. <laughs> Authorities in France are defending police actions to contain the ongoing yellow vest protests. President Emmanuel Macron is calling for order, calm and unity as the most severe legal repercussions against protesters who get violent. The protests began last month in response to a tax plan that has since been withdrawn. They continue to believe that Macron's policies are out of touch with the concerns of ordinary people. And new video out of Miami showing a terrifying armed robbery caught on camera. Surveillance footage shows a victim loading things into his car early Thursday morning when two men drive up. One of the men points a gun at the victim, ordering him to lay down, while the other rifles through his trunk. Those robbers made away with jewelry, shoes, and electronics, although fortunately the victim was not hurt. 
A warning from the FDA, a dozen patients in three states are hospitalized after receiving injections that contain stem cells. The patients in Florida, Texas, and Arizona got serious bacterial infections. Now the FDA has issued a warning to San Diego-based Genentech, the company that manufactured the treatment that contained E. coli and other dangerous bacteria. And this morning, more than 164,000 pounds of raw ground turkey are being recalled. Now, the brand is Jenny O. And the company is concerned that its raw turkey products might be contaminated with salmonella. Now, this is all part of a larger outbreak that includes other companies. And so far, the CDC is reporting 52 new cases of illness associated with the outbreak. It brings the total number to 216 cases across 38 states since it began in November 2017. One death has also been reported. And time is running out. You just have a couple of days to get those last minute Christmas gifts. Yesterday, 130 million Americans hit stores or bought gifts online on what's being called Super Saturday. And this year, shipping companies are expected to be a record year. This is what the holidays look like at the UPS World Port in Louisville, Kentucky. The company expects to make around 800 million deliveries between Thanksgiving and Christmas, peaking with a record 37 million in a single day. That is nearly double a normal day. It's the Super Bowl, it's the World Cup. Take your pick. Um, you know, this is what we plan for all year. Experts say there is a record number of packages this year due to an increase of people shopping online. And the busy Christmas travel rush is here and continuing. At California's busiest airport, Los Angeles International, most passengers planned in advance for the bigger holiday crowds, but others were caught a bit off guard yesterday. I came here with enough time thinking I would just walk through security without having to check this bag. Now they're making me check it. So my stress level just went exponentially higher in the last 10 minutes. Now, if you're flying out of San Jose, San Francisco, or Oakland today or tomorrow, head to the airport extra early so you can deal with traffic, parking, or other unexpected delays. Now, as for the effects from the federal government shutdown, Transportation Security Administration agents will be on the job, although they will be working without pay, so be extra nice to them. And expect to be screened, as usual, at the airport. 222 people are now confirmed dead after a volcano eruption and undersea landslide triggered a tsunami in Indonesia. More than 800 people are injured and 28 are still unaccounted for. Not all affected areas along the island chain have been reached. Indonesia's geophysics agency says the volcano erupted last night about 24 minutes before the tsunami. A wall of water tore through beaches and neighborhoods and flooding roads, crushing cars and flattening buildings. The most affected area is the Banting province in Java. That is southwest of Indonesia's capital of Jakarta. In Santa Clara, police are seeking the public's help in trying to find a missing man. 28-year-old Jesus Velasquez last had contact with family and friends on Thursday night. He does not have a history of disappearing or any known medical conditions. Velasquez is described as 5 feet tall and about 115 pounds. He was last seen wearing a blue Nike sweater, blue jeans, and red Nike shoes. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is urged to call the Santa Clara police. San Mateo County sheriffs arrested a package thief on the peninsula. The deputies say they need your help identifying two others. Officers tracked down 20-year-old Raymond Uloa Friday after neighbors in Milbrae reported seeing him and two others swiping packages from home. Surveillance camera caught the other suspects in the act. You can see one of them walk up and grab a couple of boxes before handing one off to his accomplice. Now here's a closer look. If you recognize them, police want to hear from you. And a Fresno man is accused of running over a young relative, then lying about it. And police say the child's own mother tried to help him cover his tracks. A neighbor's security camera caught the two-year-old walking out in front of her step-uncle's SUV. Uh, we won't show you what happens after this, but the child's mother rushed her to the hospital, but she never called police. And she later told investigators she just didn't want her stepbrother, Eddie Alvarado, to get in trouble. He also stayed silent until he was confronted with the video. Alvarado initially uh, stated that another vehicle had struck the child, that, that it was not him. However, when he was confronted with the possibility that there was, in fact, video, uh, he too changed his story and uh, confessed. 
Now, the little girl is in critical condition with head trauma and other injuries. Alvarado charged with a felony hit and run. It's not clear whether the child's mother will also face charges. And in Santa Clara County, the Holly trolley is stuck on the sidelines. The VTA says the popular trolley has a mechanical issue, so it is out of service for the time being. And now to a push to save the Redwoods from selfie-seeking visitors. The Grove of Titans, an ancient forest near the California-Oregon border, has been damaged by hikers trampling ferns, cutting their own trails, and leaving toilet paper and trash around the trees. Now $3.5 million effort is underway to clean it up and build bathrooms and walkways. Park officials say the project should be completed by 2021. Now the campfire left thousands homeless for the holidays, but in the face of all that devastation, the town of Paradise did come together for a special tree lighting yesterday. It was a night of ice skating and hot chocolate and fun, and one store even gave out hundreds of handmade stockings to displaced families. A limited edition beer created to help people affected by the Butte County wildfire appears to be an instant success. Yeah, Chico-based Sierra Nevada Brewing Company created something called Resilience Butte County Proud IPA. And more than 40 of the company's employees lost their homes in the campfire. Sierra Nevada has been giving out the recipe to breweries across the country and beyond so they can make the beer and sell it. And this project has gone way beyond expectations. It was just incredible, amazing. We were in shock and overwhelmed by the support that was offered by the brewing community. Well, more than 1,500 breweries nationwide are taking part, and Sierra Nevada expects to raise about $10 million. The plan is to donate 100% of the proceeds to the Sierra Nevada Campfire Relief Fund. A kooky holiday tradition is bringing some cheer to a San Diego County beach town. Yeah, there's a statue there named the Cardiff Kook for its unusual surfing stance, but the holiday season Pranksters targeted the statue. You can see he's dressed up in festive garland and ribbon. The culprit remains a mystery. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. 